Well, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, whatever time it is as you're looking at this video. We're now going to look at enterprise information security policy. What a great topic. So what you've done is you've decided you're a Mozart. You're one of these people that can compose beautiful music or beautiful policy in your head. And so what you're going to do is just write it all down. You're going to look at a particular enterprise and be able to provide policy around uh, that enterprise all within one document. It's very ambitious. It's typically um, reflective of a very mature company that has had a security and privacy office for some time. Typically you don't do this right out the gate, but sometimes you can. Again, you might be a Mozart. Most of us are Beethovens. We kind of do drafts and work hard and just keep cranking and incrementally making it better. In those cases, you're probably not going to use a uh, enterprise information security policy. You're going to use uh, either an issue or a technical policy uh, to address those components. But let's talk about enterprise information security policy now. So in this case, we're going to set a strategic direction, scope, and tone for the entire organization, assign out those responsibilities, and then guide uh, the delivery or, or development of that policy as it supports your entire program. And remember, policy is going to be one of those key arms within that CNSS model. Always go back and think policy, technology, and then your awareness training and education program as mechanisms of changing and affecting computer uh, and uh, security and uh, computer security and privacy operations. All right, so an EISP, Enterprise Information Security Policy, should address these kinds of topics. So you're going to provide an overview of that kind of uh, uh, corporate philosophy on security and how it relates to what you're doing, and that's going to be very different. It's based on the culture that you have within that particular company. So if you're working in a financials market, you know, the integrity of the data, the confidentiality of the data is going to be absolutely critical. Uh, if you're working at a uh, technology startup, it may not be. It may not be at all. If you're working at a place like Dropbox, which routinely sells the data that uh, subscribers put in there, that confidentiality and integrity is not going to be important, but availability uh, will be. Uh, the, uh, the second thing is, as you're doing this, you've got to come up uh, with who's responsible for what and talk about those responsibilities and the process by which the policy is implemented. One of those components, of course, is the responsibilities of everybody in the organization. And then a second component is where you name specific individuals that have different types of uh, responsibilities uh, within that group. And then this allows everybody to kind of understand their role, how the pieces fit together, in terms of delivering a uh, particular policy. Well, let's look at an example now of what a enterprise information security policy would look like. Here are the uh, typical components. You're going to have a statement of purpose. What, you know, what are you actually uh, addressing within this policy? Talk about the different elements uh, that compose that. Of course, take a big idea, break it down into some smaller parts, and then you can address each of those smaller parts. Talk about why security is important within this specific uh, enterprise. And then talk about those roles and responsibilities, which I just uh, 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 you know, talked about on the previous slide in terms of things the entire organization needs to do and then things that specific uh, either manage, you know, managers and leaders at different levels or uh, specific people need to do it within a particular role. And then finally, you want to reference the standards and guidelines uh, that support this policy. Remember, policy is going to be that broad, overarching uh, document. You go down a level and get a little bit more detailed within the standards and guidelines. And uh, you, you want to link those documents together so that they're all in one place. It's easy uh, for folks to keep up with uh, what you're trying to accomplish. All right, we'll look at that. That covers enterprise uh, security information policy. Remember, what you're trying to do is write an overarching document that covers the entire enterprise. It's difficult to do. It's reflective of mature organizations. Uh, typically, you don't start out this way unless you're a Mozart. If you can uh, compose an entire symphony in your head, you probably can compose an entire computer security program in your head, uh, and then you can write this. What more typically happens 
is folks start out with issue-specific security policy, and then after you've built up a number of those specific uh, information uh, policies, you combine them into an enterprise uh, specific policy. And if you look within our organization, within the University System of Georgia, that's exactly what we did. The security office at the system level was uh, started in 2008. Uh, the first three or four years of the uh, life of that organization, a number of critical information specific uh, security policies were issued. And then starting in 2012 and early 2013, we combined those into an enterprise uh, information security policy we call the IT handbook and in uh, particular chapters 5 and 6 of that document address uh, security in chapter 5 and risk management in chapter 6. All right this concludes this short video. Uh, next video will uh, continue this topic this exciting topic of policy and we'll look at issue specific security policies where you might begin.